This week on The Gun Room, we're taking a look at the latest iteration of Blas's R8 straight pull bolt action, and where better to put it through a field test than the Highlands of Scotland, stacking bodies of red deer. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the rifle, let's take a look at the accessories, because as any woman will tell you, it's all about the accessories, darling. So, we have a Hauskin reflex suppressor on this gun, which adds only about that much to the muzzle. We have a Spartan Precision Equipment Pro Hunt bipod, a red kettle sling, and spur mounts. The spur mounts are wrapping a Suaro 1.7 to 13.3 scope. Now, why they need to be quite so precise, I have no idea. But anyway, the whole thing is sitting on the Blaser QD mounts. That's the accessories out of the way. Let's take a look at the rifle. Now, the R8 straight pull rifle has been around since 2008 and it's one of the most popular straight pull rifles in the world. Now, in the US, you're probably not gonna to see too many of them. And the reason for that is that they are eye-wateringly expensive. It's like five grand or so just for the base rifle for this. And then Blaser are gonna ping you for 450 bucks for a scope mount. Now, when you're competing against $350 Ruger Americans in the US market, that's a pretty tough hole to rope. But in the European market, when it's pretty much a buy once, cry once kind of a deal, people tend to go up market rather than down. Now this rifle, we've put it through its paces in a bunch of different field conditions. We've had rain, sleet, snow, uh, real boggy stuff underfoot. We've dragged it through the Scottish heather and it's come away, you know, really successfully. We've stacked a lot of deer on this trip and I personally had no complaints, as you would expect for five and a half grand's worth of gun. Now let's get into the principles behind this design. First off, Blaser designed this to be a modular system, and you can swap out the barrel by taking out two Allen-headed bolts from underneath the action. Barrel comes out, and then you can swap in whatever caliber you want, all the way from, I think it's something like 22 Hornet through to 505 Gibbs, something stupid like that. Huge range of calibers. Obviously, the most popular ones are the ones in the middle. There are three different bolt head diameters in order to accommodate the three different cartridge diameters that you're probably gonna feed through the magazine. The other thing that Blaser designed this around was they had safety first and foremost in their mind. Now, I kind of have a problem with that because guns are supposed to be dangerous, but they kind of took it to the nth degree because what you can do is take out the magazine and it's a fire control system integral to the magazine. Once you take the magazine out, the gun is completely incapable of firing. You can't just throw a round into the chamber, pull the trigger, and it'll go off because there's the trigger right there. The other thing you, they need to do is, in order to fire this gun, you have to manually cock the striker to fire the first round. So to cock the rifle, you simply press forward on the striker tail like that, and then you're off to the races. To decock the rifle, simply press up, press down, and the rifle is safe again, and there's no way it can ever fire around because in order for the striker to go forward, it also has to overcome spring pressure inside the bolt. With any system, there are going to be drawbacks. For me, one of the biggest is that if I pull my magazine out and I accidentally drop it or lose it, then unlike a conventional rifle with a magazine, I still have a single shot. You know, if I'm two, 3,000 miles away from home and I lose the mag, then I can still complete my hunt by hand feeding a cartridge into the chamber, closing the bolt behind it, and continuing that way. There is no way you can do that. And if you do lose that component, which is all plastic, then you're out about 450 bucks to replace it. One of the cool things about the design is that it's extremely modular and you can swap between calibers simply by swapping out the barrel, taking out your trigger group, swapping out the magazine, swap that magazine out and it's a, as you can see it's a kind of a semi-rotary design. Swap the magazine out to match a different cartridge and then you swap out the bolt face by taking out the bolt and swapping out this radial bolt right here to, fa to match the different cartridges that you're going to be throwing through the magazine. Field stripping, that's about it. It's pretty simple. Just pull the two components out and away you go and then you can run a, a rod through the barrel if you need to. You can also completely remove the QD bases on this just by popping up these two little lugs here and then uh, untwisting it and you're off. Take the scope off, take the barrel out, you can take the fore end of the stock off, you can take the butt stock off as well, just using an Allen wrench, and then you can collapse the whole thing down into a very, very compact package for putting it on an airline. This is a new stock from Blaser, and there's a few design 
improvements over the previous version. First off, adjustable length of pull. Super easy to swap out this RSM piece here and you can adjust the length of pull on the stock. The other is it has an adjustable comb to the cheek piece. You press that button in there and you can adjust the, uh, the level of the comb so you can get behind the, the scope a lot better. And in order to field strip it, you just collapse the comb and pull the bolt out. There's also a new bipod stud or spigot on the front end of the fore end so that you can add whatever uh, bipod system you want on the gun. As far as accuracy goes, we've been getting about an inch and a half groups with uh, Hornady Super Performance ammo. I've shot these before and I know they can print a half MOA standard, so it's probably just you know finding the right ammunition for the gun. In terms of terminal performance though, the 120 grain GMX Super Performance bullet out of the 6.5 Creedmoor, I've had no problems whatsoever. We had one shot kills on pretty much everything this week. In terms of rapidity of operation, this thing being a straight pull is extremely fast. I'm going to put this thing back together and I'll show you just what I mean. Okay, so if I'm going to fire a round from this position here, the first thing I'm going to do is cock the rifle. You have to kind of, there's a certain technique that you have to use by pushing up slightly on the striker tail in order to make it catch. And it can be a bit of a pain in the ass to do. So once the rifle is ready, the weapon is effectively ready, uh, ready to fire, it's off safe. And I'm just going to squeeze a very, very light trigger. And then once that round is gone, I'm back into it. There's no lifting the bolt up and then pushing the bolt back down when you've finished chambering. It's simply... It's really that quick. It's almost as fast as, as a semi-auto if you're shooting the heavy calibers because you can cycle the bolt when you're in recoil and as the gun settles back down, it's already in battery with a fresh cartridge. So, almost as fast as a semi-auto, which these Euro trash governments hate, but, you know, it has all the benefits as well of a bolt action rifle. So inherently accurate, very reliable, and certainly when it's been out in the field, we've had no problems with it whatsoever this week. Now, if you think that the benefits of a straight pull bolt action rifle are what you need in order to complete your hunt, and bear in mind, there is a big price to value continuum on this spectrum. And this one is eye-wateringly expensive, but it does offer the benefits of being blisteringly quick fire that second round with being a straight pull. The radial bolt head is self-centering and is very accurate. And the barrel change system is pretty quick and slick and it allows you to retain zero with the scope mount. If all those benefits fit what you need from a rifle, check out the Blaster R8. It's an eye-wateringly expensive piece of kit, but it might be worth it for you.